Hello YouTubers and welcome back to Coach Twig's YouTube channel. Um, I do want to dispel any rumors and make sure that you understand it's fact. The birds, they typically wake up to me chirping. So good morning. Today I want to cover a topic that has probably a thousand different ways to do it. A good friend of mine once used to say, well, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat. And at the same time, he was a coach and he would say to our kids, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, but today we're gonna skin it my way. Well, today I'm not really gonna make you skin it my way. We're gonna give you some choices. We're gonna talk about the stride and different things that can happen with your stride and different approaches um, so that hopefully you can find a stride that works for you. Please understand that as I teach you about stride, I'm not teaching you anything else. So you may see some things happening with my hands. You might see a load. You might see other parts of the swing that are happening. But understand that the focus of this video is specifically stride. So with that in mind, please don't pay too much attention to other things that are happening as we will take our time in other videos to show you those things. So when it comes to the stride, as a part of your swing, we can start with the very, very simple and we can go to the much more advanced. Now, what would be considered a simple stride? Well, you can't even really say it's a stride. It's called no stride hitting. Um, why would we do no stride hitting? Balance, being able to stay back better on off speed pitches and curveballs, and easiness or ease of use. Uh, basically, with no stride, we get good and wide. We're up on the balls of our feet. And the first thing you're going to say is, well, wait a minute. If we're not going to stride, how are we going to generate any power? Well, that's done with our hips and our lower body as we need to rock into our no stride. So we are here and we rock back and we take our swing. And that is basically called no stride hitting. The second type of stride is probably what 95% of people my age were taught when they were younger. And it's a simple stride forward. It's not a leg kick, it's not a knee lift, it's not a catapult, it's very, very simple. We get ourselves in a good athletic position with feet slightly wider than shoulder width. We get into our stance and we're simply gonna lift our foot and move it forward slightly. The one thing I do want you to notice is when we do this, my weight is still going to stay here. I haven't transferred my weight through the baseball, so it doesn't look like this. This is incorrect. Okay, one more time. Here to here. That is the second form that we're teaching today. Now our third example is not quite gonna be knee lift or leg lift, but it's not gonna be that simple stride that I just showed you either. It's probably somewhere in between. So it's allowing us to get our foot off the ground, our knee off the ground a little bit without going too far. So we get into our stance. We are going to do a slight lift and back, okay? It's here, slight lift and go. Um, that's a good method for somebody who wants to generate a little more power, but somebody who 100% has good body control. Without good body control, it's gonna to get tougher and tougher as we go. You need to be athletic. For anybody that says baseball players don't need to be athletic, they're full of it. We are athletes, don't forget that. I must say that this next one has kind of turned into one of my favorites. Um, and it's along the catapult hitting system. So if there's anybody that's ever read anything about the catapult hitting system, this is what's gonna happen with your lower half. And I like it for a lot of reasons. It's not a complete knee lift or leg kick, but it's also not our old fashioned, just regular stride that we just talked about a couple of minutes ago in the segment. And what this one involves is bringing our knees together as we rock back and then get ready to move forward. So the other reason I like is it's a controlled knee movement. 
It's not just letting a player take his knee lift and his leg lift and do whatever he wants with it. We have a goal of getting our knees together and not our heels or any other part. And it looks something like this. We are in our stance, knees together and plant. One more time. We are here, knees together and plant. And again, the reason I like that is it's controlled. It doesn't allow the player to get too crazy because once we start getting too crazy, this pitch, which is the curveball, this pitch, which is the change up, they're gonna drive you batty, okay? So now we're getting ready to move on to our last couple steps. I feel like our last option is for advanced players only. I see a lot of little leaguers doing this, and when it's done correctly, and they get the perfect pitch, and it's a fastball right down the middle, they will hit it a country mile. But if they don't get the pitch they want, or it's off speed, or it's a pitch that's out of the zone, they end up looking foolish because it's so easy to mess this one up. I bring up Alex Rodriguez in this example because A-Rod was one who could do the knee lift or the leg kick and he could keep himself balanced. The other big teaching point here is you cannot hit the ball until your front foot lands. And a lot of younger players try to do knee lift because it looks like the pros their foot doesn't get down on time, and them and their parents are wondering why the fastball gets blown by us every single time. Well, without that front foot being down, get used to it, because that's gonna happen to you all the time. So here we go. We call this knee lift or leg kick. We get into our stance, we are here, we're gonna lift, and we're gonna come down. Now, my suggestion with this is just like I teach my pitchers. I don't like the knee lift that comes up and then opens up like a rusty gate and goes here. When we pitch that way, we lose all of our velocity and all of our core and our mid strength. It's no different with hitting. So if you're gonna do knee lift or if you're going to do leg lift, we lift down and then out. It is not lift, open and land out here like this. One more time done correctly here lift down and out lift down and out and the reason that i try to stay away from this method unless i have a very advanced player should be pretty obvious to all of us it's hard enough to hit a baseball then you add in sometimes the baseball changes speeds then the pitch changes locations and then your pitchers get better and better at doing all of those things, and that's hard enough as is. We don't wanna to have to put it on younger players to then have total body control while they're trying to get everything into a ball to hit it 500 miles. And that's the goal, don't get me wrong. I don't teach people to play patty cake or to have a pillow fight with the ball. Our basic goal is to annihilate the baseball. It's to create some pain and hit it hard. So that's a good way to teach that. But you gotta understand, it is a crazy amount of athletic ability to put all of that together with all of what I just mentioned about pitches and locations and speeds. And for some younger players, it's just not doable. So I know there's some dads out there that want their kids to look like the next pro and to look like they can do the leg kick and things like that, and they smile and they pat their chest when their kid hits at 600 miles. Problem is, we don't pat our chest when they strike out the next three or four times because a pitcher is better than our hitter. Um, take a good hitter, give them the proper fundamentals, and don't put too much on their plate. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and I can tell you this, I had a lot of fun putting this one together. You know, if you watched my bunning video the other day, um, I brought in somebody that was a better bunner than myself. I instructed that person, showed you how to do it correctly. You're gonna get my best each and every day, and if it means bringing in someone else that's a little bit of a better example than maybe myself showing, I'm gonna do that every single time. Understand that with my YouTube channel, you're gonna get my best effort each and every day, and I'm gonna do whatever I can to help you become a better ball player. 
This one was exciting for me because hitting is what I love. It's what I like to do. It's what I like to teach. It's kind of my passion, that and catching, which we'll get into in a couple of weeks. Thanks for tuning into Coach Twig's YouTube channel. Please click like and also subscribe. I can't wait to see what our next video is, and I hope you feel the same. Thank you.